So we're here at Google I.O. 2019 checking out Android Automotive. Now that's not to be confused with standard Android Auto, which requires an Android phone. This is purpose-built for cars from the ground up. You don't need an Android phone. You don't even need a smartphone at all. It just works right on the in-car in display. So here at I.O. we have Volvo's Polestar 2. It's an all-electric car, and it's going to be the very first vehicle to get Android Automotive. Now, we saw Android Automotive, an uh, uh, earlier version of it last year, retrofitted to a Volvo XT40. This is a completely different version of the software. It's been totally revamped, totally redesigned, so that now it works on a portrait-style tablet, like you'd see in a Tesla vehicle. Here in the Polestar 2, it's been specifically designed to take advantage of Android Automotive. So it's got four quadrants right here. Uh, you've got media down here. You've got a uh, car information up here on the top right. You've got uh, the status of your phone here on the bottom left. And then you've also got navigation from Google Maps up here on the top left. So one of the best features of Android Automotive is that you don't just control your phone with this. Uh, you're actually controlling the car because it's built directly into the car. So for instance, you can use Google Assistant to change the temperature uh, inside the vehicle. Okay, Google, set the temperature to 70. Sure, changing the temperature to 70 degrees. So with Android Automotive, you don't need an Android phone. You don't even need a phone at all, actually. Uh, it's all built right here into the car itself. So if you want to play from Spotify, uh, you can just say, OK, Google, play You Lit My Fire. All right, You Lit My Fire by Anne Brunn. Here it is on Spotify. And there you go, playing right here natively from the car's display. So in addition to the 11-inch display you have here, Polestar has its own 12.3-inch display that it has right here above the steering wheel. And that can actually mirror software from Android Automotive. So right now you have a Google Maps custom display. So it tells you your speed, tells you uh, what gear you're in, uh, also tells you your charge and your power down here on the right, but it has the Google Maps uh, navigation right here in the middle so that you never lose sight of it. You don't have to look over. Uh, you don't have to take your eyes off the road, that kind of thing. Now this can actually be customized in one of three modes. So this is the navigation mode. You can actually put it into a, a different mode, more of a minimalist one, where you just have speed and power right here uh, in the middle. It's actually got one more mode too, where if you go from here to the, from the minimalist mode, you can go right into one where it's telling you information from all of the car's sensors. So like with standard Android Auto, uh, Android Automotive uh, gives you all the same hands-free features. So you can receive texts, phone calls, you can do it all using your voice as well. So for as nice as Android Automotive is, it's not coming to a car near you anytime soon, unfortunately. It's gonna start in the Polestar 2, then Volvo says it's gonna bring it to other Volvo cars later on. Some other car manufacturers like Nissan, Mitsubishi, Audi, and Fiat Chrysler, they've all announced support for Android Automotive and they wanna use it in their cars. We just don't know when that's gonna show up and which models it's going to support. The good news is, Google has also updated standard Android Auto, the one that comes right from your phone, and we're able to check it out. So the new Android Auto, when you press this button here, launches you now right into Maps, and it also still has your media playing right away. Um, as soon as you navigate somewhere here, it'll now keep that navigation going when you switch back to the home screen. So now, on this new version of Android Auto, you've got this menu bar down here that uh, has contextual information from your other apps run running simultaneously, so you don't have to switch between apps anymore. You just have Maps down here, um, if you're running Spotify, for instance, you can kill the navigation. It'll keep this running down here, so no matter what app you're in, you can change songs, you can uh, pause, you can add to your playlist. Um, you'll also notice this whole new menu bar layout. It's uh, a little bit more uh, easier to understand, easier to use. Um, instead of having too many things on the screen, you've got this row up here that is your most commonly used apps in each category. And of course, for something like Android Auto, that's going to be navigation, uh, media, and then communication. Uh, and they've also got this whole dark theme, which just makes it blend a lot better into the actual interior of the car. It's no longer super distracting or super uh, eye-popping colors. And they've also got right down here this notification bar. Uh, you've also got these assistant shortcuts for all these apps here. So just pressing it will activate assistant for the weather, for your reminders here, calendar for your schedule, and then also for Google News for uh, recent headlines. So another cool car-related feature Google is announcing is Google Assistant's ability to remotely control your car. Now this doesn't require Android Auto or anything like that. This requires you have an Android phone with Google Assistant and you have a Hyundai or Daimler vehicle, which are going to be the first two brands to support it in the coming months. Essentially, you'll be able to use Google Assistant and talk into your phone to unlock, lock your doors, 
change uh, the temperature of your car, and also check your fuel gauge so you know how far you'll be able to drive. For all The Verge's coverage of Google I.O. 2019, check us out at TheVerge.com. And for video deep dives on the Pixel 3a, the Nest Hub Max, and Android Q, check us out on YouTube at YouTube.com slash TheVerge. Thanks for watching.